2024 has been the year of the intricate storylines, and adding to the list is the new thriller on Max called Cato Lake. It's twisty and urgent, but is that enough to want to watch? When an eight-year-old girl mysteriously vanishes, a series of past deaths and disappearances start to link together, forever altering a broken family's history. All right, so if you care about Munchies, stick around to the end of this as I've got something new to try. Dylan O'Brien, Eliza Scanlon, Lauren Ambrose, and Eric Lang star in this, and the story follows this family living near the swamp areas near Louisiana and Texas. And after a tumultuous family dinner, a little girl disappears, creating an urgent search which leads to discombobulating circumstances. Now, there are several other movies and series that utilize a very similar premise as this, but that doesn't make this movie any less exciting or engaging. I don't want to name any of those because it would instantly give away the plot. Most likely, you are going to be able to guess what's occurring before any reveals, but even once clues appear, the story holds so much more before it concludes. Now, the characters in this, they're not hugely developed, but that's by design. We get small insights just as everything progresses, and the lack of information helps maintain the story's intrigue. For the thrills to be maintained, we really need the players to be strangers to us. And I didn't find that it hampered my connection with any of them, despite not really knowing much about them. Now, Dylan O'Brien is brooding and a tiny bit mysterious, but also a little damaged, which can make him appear to be slightly sketchy. And at the very least, he's sad and he's just resigned to his life. He's not unsympathetic and he does maintain charm, even with that tiny bit of doubt to him. Eliza Scanlon, she's the other lead for this, and she's kind of gruff at the start, sparring with just her entire family, which then shows us the strife that exists between she, her mom, and her stepdad, but really not divulging the why behind it all. Now, the theme of family, it runs all throughout the story arc, and then Scanlon gives us a convincing and compelling young woman who's tough, but also very hurt. The determination that she shows, it's undaunting, even tragic, especially as we watch her realize what's going on later on. Now, there's a devastation that's mixed with uncertain hope, and in these moments, any of the rough edges, they melted away. So all I could see was her reconciliation to the facts. Now, Eric Lang and Lauren Ambrose, they're good for their parts, but they're much more in the background. And despite not being prominent throughout, they do each have some very poignant conversations with Scanlon that both give clues to what's occurred, as well as create some highly emotional segments that aren't fully realized until much later within the story. Now, I don't know about you, but for as intriguing and mysterious as a swamp might appear, I have zero desire to ever step foot in one. I mean, never mind the crocodiles, alligators, or mosquitoes, but just the sheer vastness of some of these areas is downright daunting. We sometimes get aerial shots of the location, and while it helps to establish the scene, once we're down in the midst of the dense mossy overhangs and protruding roots and stumps that the characters are traversing through, the swamp itself becomes a deadly antagonist within the story. And because of the lonely isolation that's created from the lack of visibility and then all the treacherous terrain, the sound design becomes an essential part of the storytelling to just build chills or create chaos. Now, there are several times when there's this clanging or exploding type of sound effect it just reverberates through the swamp. And because none of the characters recognize what it is, it sets off a sense of dread for us. Now, there comes a point in this film when something is revealed, and it shifted my whole outlook on the story arc. I mean, the core of the story is still very much intact and in line with how it begins, but a new complication becomes understood, and then that opens up the twist that had really helped to drive the narrative. This complication, it is a little complex, and because of the swiftness of the plot within the final act, you may find yourself falling a step behind just for a beat. The good thing is, though, that this isn't overly convoluted, so that it won't make any sense. There's just a few moments towards the end, as all the arcs are starting to coalesce, that it can feel jumbled, even though it really isn't. Now, I had a lot of fun with this, especially with how demanding the pacing became. As pieces fall into place, the steps get quicker, and the story elements, they just begin to stack in uber-quick succession. The franticness of the storytelling, it's matched by the behaviors of the characters, each becoming more consumed by their pursuit with some then heartbreaking moments that are thrown in as if, you know, we're not already tense enough from all the other culmination of events. But for as much fun as this is, I think the largest drawback is really the lack of originality within the story. I mean, yeah, the settings and the characters, they're different from what has been done before, but there are more than a few movies and shows that use this exact same setup for their arc. 
And once you figure that part out, despite the energy of the plot and the connection that's been built with the characters, it still feels like just a rehashing of things we've already seen. And this isn't the fault of the actors or even the directors necessarily. And I do say necessarily because they also wrote this. But <laughs> the writing is unoriginal at its core. So that no matter what character differences there might be or how a scenario plays differently, this really is just a rinse and repeat. So all in all, Cotto Lake is a wild ride through the dense swamps with thrills and heartbreak thanks to engaging performances from Dylan O'Brien and Eliza Scanlon. The atmosphere, sound design, and pressure cooker pacing create an exciting mystery with abundant complexities. Despite the energy of the storytelling, the tale lacks originality, retreading where several have gone before, only changing characters and setting. It's still a satisfying watch, but it's not something that's going to stick with you for long. There's no sex or nudity, some profanity, and some violence. I give Cotto Lake three out of five couches. So have you seen any twisty movies lately? I mean, I've actually seen quite a few over the last few weeks. So if you are looking for something to watch, check out some of my other recent reviews. But if you have seen something great, though, I would really love to hear about it in the comments below. All right, so as promised, I'm going to be trying out this new Kit Kat that my daughter got for me. It is Chocolate Frosted Donut. I don't know. I did open it, but I have not tasted it yet. Full disclosure, also, not a huge Kit Kat fan. I don't gravitate towards them, but you can see it's, ooh, it's like a donut. It's got chocolate on the top, brown, light brown on the bottom. Okay, it just smells like a, smells like a Kit Kat. I don't know. For all you ASMR people. Um... I don't know what this tastes like. It doesn't taste like a donut. It's not wholly revolting. It's also not good. Um, actually, no. And it has that waxy thing. So, my teeth and my tongue are now coated. Um, chocolate frosted donut Kit Kat. I don't recommend that, but hey, you know what? If you are a huge Kit Kat lover, whatever, give it a try. All right. If you enjoyed this review, please give it a like. Also, don't forget to share and subscribe. I'm Chris. This is Movies and Munchies. Thanks for couching with me. Gonna need something to drink. <laughs>